and welcome to the Talk of Fame podcast. My name is Kari Martini, host of the Talk of Fame podcast, where it is your go-to place for compelling interviews and discussions surrounding important topics like mental health and women empowerment. Today, we have Caroline Lobin, who is an actor, singer, and songwriter. As an actor, Caroline started her acting career at the age of four and started professionally acting at the age of seven. She's also co-starred in the feature films and numerous short films produced by filmmakers at USC, UCLA, SDSU, Loyola Marymount University, New York Film Academy, and Orange County School of the Arts. As a singer, Caroline started performing at just five years old. Since then, she has written and recorded more than nine original songs. Caroline is working on several new projects at the same time. She manages to be involved at school and maintain excellent grades as well. Caroline has learned the art of balancing and using her time efficiently. She just came out with a new song and music video called If I Was The Mirror, which I absolutely love and listened to this morning. I literally have been <laughs> obsessed with this song, as I told Caroline earlier, that it's really amazing. I'm so excited <laughs> to be talking about it, but welcome to the show, Caroline. Thank you so much for having me. I'm loving being here. And thank you for listening to my song. I'm glad you loved it. Absolutely. So <laughs> I know you are like 13 years old, right? Yeah, I'm 13 years old. So you've been acting like for so long, more, longer than I've been doing this. Like how did you <laughs> get started in the entertainment industry at such a young age? So I've been acting um, in theater for my whole life. I started when I was three, like in acting um, just in San Diego. That's where I live. But um, when I was six, I was about to turn seven. For my seventh birthday, I said to my mom, I don't want anything for my birthday. All I want is to be an actress. And my mom was like, well, you want to do more theater? We can get you into more theater. But I told her, no, I want to be on TV. I want to be in film acting. And um, so since I was seven, um, I've been acting and going on auditions. And um, yeah, I, that's kind of where it all started. Crazy. Like, did, like during that time, like, did you prefer theater or acting on TV at that point? Well, I hadn't had much experience with acting on TV, but I watched a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows. I loved Disney. Um, that really made me want to be in um, film more. So I think when I was seven is when I realized um, I wanted to do film rather than theater. Mm, because I know with Disney, I love Disney movies as well. So Same. I know with Disney movies, it makes everyone's heart throb to the point where like, I just want to be in Disney movies for my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was obsessed with um the Descendants movies oh I was the same exact way when they came out yeah. like did they uh -huh. come out a new movie or something yeah I think they just came out with the Descendants 4 I've been oh. wanting to watch it like I didn't even know it was actually coming out which is insane yeah. I watched all three the day it all came out but I didn't even know they were mm -hmm. even making a fourth especially with Cameron Boyce passing away a couple years ago I thought they're mm -hmm. not gonna make another one yeah, I didn't think so either. I think it's a new cast, though. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Do you know if uh, Dove Cameron is in it this time or no? I I saw that she isn't. But I know um, Uma is and um, the fairy godmother is. Mm, I would say Dove Cameron is kind of one of the main points of me watching it. So I don't know if yeah, I'm watching it this too. time. She's so talented. Yeah. I know she is. I don't know if she's focusing on her music career now or I acting. Think she I'm is. not sure, but yeah. she's releasing a tons of music now. Yeah, she is. It's really good too. It is. Like, especially mm -hmm. like her boyfriend song. I absolutely yeah. love that one. Me too. It's so good. It is. And what are some challenges? you have faced as an actor and singer, especially at a young age, I'm sure it has been tons of challenges. Yeah, well, I mean, there's been a lot of challenging times, um, especially with the strike and everything. Um, I would say at such a young age, handling rejection a lot is kind of hard on mental health and everything. Um, I would also say a struggle that's um, ongoing is just my personal life conflicting with my acting life um and my music life just schedule wise and um like I have friends in acting and outside of acting and sometimes it just gets a little overwhelming mm -hmm. but um that's probably 
one of the main challenges. Yeah. Like, honestly, I've been dealing with the exact same thing. I'm honestly Really? so bad at, like, basically scheduling and then saying, I want to do this, but I get so exhausted from it and saying, Yeah. like, I want to do this, but I want to hang out with my friends and do other Yeah. things that have more free time. But sometimes acting or entertainment or whatever you do is not always like that, which is sometimes can drive people nuts and it drives me nuts I know. at some points. Yeah, like the amount of times I've had to cancel on my friends, like from making plans because I have to go to, go up to LA. It's like, but I wouldn't take it back. Like, I love acting. I would rather I would do it any day. I know. So it's, it honestly sucks because everything can <laughs> come last minute. So it's like, yeah. You want to hang out with your friends, but you also want to pursue a career. It was to say acting. So it's like you just don't know what to do. But there's always Mm -hmm. other times where you can hang out with your friends. But, Yeah. you know, sometimes it might not seem like that in the moment. And I and I'm still trying to figure things out like that. But anything ha can happen any day. Yeah. Last year, you came out with a new book called The Secrets of the Haunted Mansion. What initially drew you to the idea of writing The Secret House of the Haunted Mansion? So when I was in fifth grade, um, we had a homework assignment to write a short story. And I started writing a story of this haunted mansion. And the first chapter of the book is um, what I wrote for homework that night. And I showed it to my mom and she was like, oh, you should keep going with this. And so I ended up writing a whole book and um, we decided to publish it just for fun. I mean, I'm not really an author, but Um, I do like writing my free time, so it's cool that I have a book out there. Mm, yeah, like once I saw it, I'm like, oh my gosh, she, she has a book out already? <laughs> Like, how long did it take you for like, to get all that done? well, the writing might have taken me maybe five months or six Oh, that's months. not bad at all, but I know with a lot Yeah. of writers, it takes some like years upon years to get it done. Yeah, I know. And my my story might only be like 100 pages, but also because I had school and everything and acting. But um, the whole book might have taken, I think, two years just to get out there and everything. Oh, that's not bad. I feel like publishing takes a lot more processing than Yeah. actually writing the book. It's actually like hiring people to publish it. Mm -hmm. Who's your It's publisher? a long Like process. it takes a whole thing, probably much longer than actually writing the book itself. Yeah, I know. And um, like working with so many people to publish it, it's it's very um, takes a long time. I know. And that's something that... can be very hard to do because you're actually <laughs> trying to figure out a publisher that's actually good for you not just yeah. hiring a publisher just because they re reached out to you it's just a matter of how much they want you to pay for a publisher if they Yeah. are charging it's not a lot of places charge uh, like for their services but it's just a matter of like what they offer how much they pay it's just a matter Yeah. of making sure like They fit your criteria, which can be so overwhelming and take It, so yeah. long, which I cannot do at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So what aspects of your book were inspired by your own experience or interests? Like, did it kind of come out your own life or was it kind of all like inspiration? Um, well, a lot of it was kind of just my imagination. Um, but I guess parts of it that um, relate with real life are there's two best friends in the story, Emily and Claire. And um, I had a I have a best friend and I think we kind of relate to those characters because we're pretty adventurous. And um, so that kind of definitely bled into the story. And um, I'm a huge fan of Disney movies, as we talked about. Mm -hmm. And I love Beauty and the Beast. Mm And -hmm. I think Oh, I that love it too, story... yeah. Yeah, I think that story definitely um, inspired my story. It's kind of like a twist on it. Mm, yeah, I love it. Like, do you like the live version better or the, like, animated version? That's a hard question. I love both of them. Um, I do like the live version with Emma I don't Watson, know why, right? but, like, I prefer the live action for some reason. I'm not really Yeah. into animated movies for some reason. 
but I I used to watch the animated version when I was younger but as I grew older I was like I love the live version more yeah Emma Watson I love Emma Watson so I was like me too for any Harry Potter fans I'm not a Harry Potter fan no hate to anyone (laughs) out there but um it's just with her I'm just like oh my gosh I have to keep watching but she's so good in that movie that you have to keep watching over and over yeah she's so good in it I remember seeing it for the first time and I was like wow (laughs) <laughs> I know I it was I saw for the first time I was like I like this girl like she's amazing yeah. and I think the cast like every like whoever casted the cast in the movie I have to say like they did an amazing job in the cast they did they did and you just dropped a new song as I said earlier I was the mirror um I listened to the sound this morning and oh my gosh it's a little bit amazing it's on YouTube <laughs> I think Spotify and stuff right yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, I just um, came out with my new song called "If I Was the Mirror," and um, I wrote this song during a time when I was kind of feeling bad about my body image, and I think that's something a lot of people, no matter how old they are, have to struggle with. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, it does impact a lot of teenagers and people that are young, um, but it can affect everyone. Like mm-hmm. from what I've seen. And um, the whole process of writing and recording this song, it took me 20 minutes to write this song, which is really short compared to how long it takes me to write most songs. Um, But I wrote this song the morning of going into the studio. And when I came to the studio with it, we started working on it that day. And we got it basically almost finished in one day. Oh gosh, like once yeah. I listened to it on YouTube this morning, I read in the description with all the lyrics, but because I was like, oh, I kind of want to see the in-depth lyrics on it if you guys had it, yeah. and you guys did, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like not a lot of songs are about this, like once I read yeah. it, and I know, like with a lot of songs, with people write songs depending on what they've been through most of the time or what people have been through in their lives like especially yeah. as a teenager I have dealt with that same thing and I'm sure with tons of other teen- teenagers as well dealt with the same thing but it needs to be talked about because people sometimes mm-hmm. especially as a teenager don't often times know how to love themselves as a person and stuff yeah they are as a person especially it's hard because as teenagers, I mean, we're going through puberty and we're changing and like, it's hard um, seeing ourselves change. We think there's something wrong with us, but there really isn't. And oh, yeah, yeah. I think it it is a message that really needs more awareness. And I'm hoping that my song can bring it more awareness um, and help those who need to hear it. Mm. Um, I know it's, it's really helped me um, get out of a place in my mind that just... I don't know, didn't accept myself. Mm -hmm. Now I am better than ever. I love myself. And this song really helped me. So I hope it can help others. Mm, It definitely is a message where when people hear the song, they're oftentimes like, oh my gosh, I didn't think about this in such a way. Like how can I transform my mindset into actually loving myself rather than hating myself? Because Mm -hmm. especially as a teenager, in social media like you oftentimes compare yourself to other people whether it's your yeah. friends or it's regular strangers you follow on social media and mm-hmm. when you see other people living their best lives like yeah. looking but like much better than you and kind of dress better than you it really the lives on how you feel by yourself no matter if you have yes. money or not like no matter if what you look like or how much money you have everyone has worthy mm-hmm. or something and that song is really kind of an example of that but no matter how you feel you should love yourself mm-hmm. no matter what and I think social media yeah. can be really toxic and that sort of thing it is so toxic and it represents so many bad um, images on like how you should think of yourself. And it's really hard comparing yourself to everyone on social media. Mm-hmm. I think it's really toxic. And sometimes it's important to just stay away from your phone for like a day or however long you need. I kind of do that sometimes, maybe like once a week, just to reset my brain and Mm-hmm. make sure I'm okay and stuff yeah. yeah that is such a good idea like it's like when you are in those minds not going on social media or even your phone is probably the best thing to do if you're in a mindset yeah. you keep going on social media 
and seeing those so people, bad. you're like, it's just going to make matters worse for you and not making anything better. Yeah, it's so bad. And it can really impact your mental health. Like, it really could. Very badly. Like, yeah. So are there any specific lyrics in the song that hold a special meaning to you in the song? Yes. Um, well, in the chorus, it goes, um, the, I would say um, the line in the chorus where I say, don't waste your wishes to be someone else. You're perfect. I really love that line. Um, I feel like I always think of it as like, you're at a birthday and you're blowing out your candles on your cake and like if you're wishing for something like if you're wishing like oh I wish I was skinnier I wish I was I wish I had longer hair I wish I blah 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 like you shouldn't waste your wishes on that like waste your wishes or use your wishes to like ask for something else because um your self-worth is not based on how you look and um I don't know. I love that line a lot. And yeah, I think when, awesome. when I thought of it, I was like, wow, I love that. I'm definitely keeping that. Yeah, you, that is like, you, I'm glad you kept that because that is such an important message because no one should have to hate themselves for how they look. Like you really, yeah. because nothing is really going to change that for you. And the most mm -hmm. important thing people really need to realize is that they really need to love themselves more than they want to change how they look as a person and mm -hmm. how can they act as a person because it's you should act um like as a different person than who you are because you should be yourself no mm -hmm. matter what or just to fit in with other people that is something yeah. I oftentimes had to realize and I'm sure for you as well it's like you shouldn't have to change or anything so you can fit in and yeah. be like others because being like others is honestly boring as hell it's like, so not, boring like, I've realized that as I've grown older like you should never try to fit in with people you have to be like yourself and you have to stand out and um I think it's just a waste of time to try and be like other people mm -hmm. um, and I hope yeah yeah, it, it, yeah. So to kind of wrap up this episode, I have some very fun questions for you that I literally, like, I had to figure out these amazing questions to wrap up. But the first question I have for you is, if you had to choose a character to be for the day in the secret, the haunted mansion, what would you choose? Hmm. Huh, that's a good question. I would maybe choose... Emily maybe because she's very adventurous and um she's like so brave like I mean I want to be like her so Ooh, um definitely one, yeah I yeah if, and if you weren't an actor what would you be huh. if I wasn't an actor what would I be I, have I know that's no a very clue. hard question I yeah. every time someone asks me that question I'm like I have no clue like yeah what would I be actually I know. I mean, acting is like my life. Like it's I my know. favorite thing in the world and music too, singing and songwriting. Um, if I had to be something else, maybe, I don't know. I just hope I would be doing something creative. Mm, like anything like in the creative. entertainment industry at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe directing or writing. Um, mm, that's like, a good one I honestly yeah. would say the exact same thing if someone yeah. asked me that question because I always wanted to be in the entertainment industry ever since I was a little kid so I'll probably choose like yeah. anything as long as I'm in the industry that's mm -hmm. really what I want yeah no same yeah the last question I have for you is what who is your favorite song and artist at the moment hmm. uh well my favorite artist I mean, probably of all time, like the in recent years, probably Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, I'm a huge fan really of good. her. Yeah, I went to um her concert in February. Oh, was she um, good? She's so good. I love her. I love going to her concerts. Um, I went to her Sour tour and I went to her Guts tour. Oh, and, really? Yeah. Which one was better? Like, which one did you kind of enjoy mm. the most? They were both so good. But I do think Guts was more um, planned out. Like, I feel like Sour was um, kind of demanded by her fans because 
she like didn't expect to be going on tour so fast mm. but guts was really planned out with like the choreography and everything yeah. um all the lighting and everything it, it was I think Guts was more entertaining, but Sour was so fun, too. Mm, I heard, like, both tours are really good. Like, she was mm. in Philly a few weeks ago. I didn't mm. know about it. I just, like, once I saw people post on social media, I'm like, oh, I guess she's in, a, like, in Philly at the Wells Fargo Center or something. Yeah. <laughs> but I hope she really goes back on tour, though, because that would be yeah. really fun. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's a perfect way to wrap up this episode. I really appreciate everyone tuning in. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. Thank you so much, Caroline, for coming on and chatting with us today. I love everything you're doing and all the music you've been putting out and everything. It's literally amazing. I love it so much and really appreciate you on this Saturday afternoon to talk, talk with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to have been here and um, you're doing an amazing job with your podcast and I'm really happy for you. Thank you so much. Same yeah. here as well. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day. Make sure to like, subscribe, and review. I'll talk to you guys very soon.